Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us here tonight. It is March the 1st, and actually potentially feeling like we are somewhat moving out of the last 12 months, which um, I think we all hope we could forget a little bit. So um, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Jonathan Mastin, and I am the Director of Sales for Propel Orthodontics in Canada. And we're excited to offer tonight for you um, an exclusive webinar that Dr. Lee Marr is going to present um, for us on what Propel can do in your practice as far as orthodontics goes and you know increase efficiencies, reduce office visits, have faster treatment. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, applications and retention. And again, we're partnering with um, the Dental Buyers Network tonight and are excited to provide this um, exclusively for your group and we'll be offering some group discounts this evening as well. So just quickly a little bit about Dr. Marr. Um, Dr. Marr graduated with his um, specialization in orthodontics from the University of Montreal and after that moved to Edmonton where he's been practicing in St. Albert for um, just over 15 years now. Uh, Dr. Marr's journey took him from using a lot of fixed uh, appliances first, a lot of braces, and then uh, flipping to the other side of the mouth with Lingual. Um, now, Dr. Marr is kind of unique in that 100% um, of his cases are aligner cases. So safe to say he's you know, taken that journey um, to understand aligners from 14 day to seven day to potentially faster than seven day um, exchanges, which, which he'll be talking about tonight. Um, he is now also um, a clinical professor at the University of Alberta. And Dr. Mars done over 200 Propel cases, um, a mix of you know, micro perforations, which he'll speak about, and high frequency vibration. Um, but there's few doctors that sort of have that depth um, of of knowledge within the accelerated um, orthodontic sphere. Um, we're really excited to see some of his cases and, and learn a little bit more about how we can help um, patients uh, with their orthodontic journey. So with that, I am happy to introduce Dr. Lee T. Marr. Dr. Marr, please take it away for us. Thank you, Jonathan. So yeah, so I just gonna Minimize the screen. There we go. So you guys can see my slide. <clears throat> so yeah, welcome again. Thank you so much for the introduction, Jonathan. So uh, this is not uh, the first time I do this. The Propel I did uh, with you uh, in the past. Also, we have done live presentation and live demo with people as well, with patients also. So it's kind of fun. So you can see if there's a chance in the future we could do that as well. And that would be so nice to see that live demo with the real patient at the same time. So today the topic is about accelerated orthodontic procedures to increase aligner therapy efficiency. So you see in this lecture tonight, we talk about aligner therapy. So you will see that I don't have any braces case in this lecture specifically for tonight. So thank you for the opportunity and thanks to DBN as well for the co-sponsorship of this lecture. So uh, a little bit about myself. So 17 years in orthodontics. So I moved to Alberta in 2004. Uh, a lot of cases are aligners that I've done. So more than 2,500 uh, cases already. And uh, I teach at U of A, part-time clinical uh, professor, along with Dr. Manuel Lagraver, who is a full-time there. And uh, him and I, we co-founded the uh, uh, Edmonton Orthodontic Study Club, where we teach dentists everything about orthodontics and from you know braces to appliance to phase one now we do four clear aligners and in 2017 i was uh, offered for to be the kol for propel orthodontics and the lectures uh, with propel i consulted with align for class two correction the ma with the wings so most of you have seen that and uh, I founded the Aligner Coach, the Aligner Society, and the Clear Aligner Paradigm uh, last year. 
also KOL and lecture for Clear Correct and then on the panel on a few uh, boards there. So biography, I think Jonathan did already for me, for me. So thank you so much. And uh, this is my academics uh, school. So I did my undergrad in Montreal, and then I did postgrad at UCSF, Pacific, and Harvard, and then after that, complete orthodontic uh, training again at Montreal, and then after that, moved here. So just to start, so I just want to have to do a little bit of a disclosure here. So I'm not employed by any dental company. I do not own stock securities or interest in any dental company. Uh, none of my family members or extended family members are employed or own any stock securities or interest in any dental companies. And I have consulted or evaluated products for the following organizations, so mostly uh, Align, Clear Correct, and Propel. The other thing is I have been compensated for the past for consulting and for evaluating the product uh, for the sponsors, including Propel Orthodontics. So in my participation in this event, I have received an honorarium from Propel and the opinion expressed in this presentations are my views and may not necessarily reflect the views or policies of the sponsor. The material provided are for educational use and not to be used for advertising or product endorsement purposes. So this presentation has been approved for continuing education credit as well. So we wish that there's no photograph, video, or audio recordings permitted during the presentation. So without further ado, so let's start. So introduction to manual osteo perforation and high frequency vibration, so MOPS and HFV. So let's uh, the two ways to accelerate orthodontic movements are by high frequency vibration device or by MOPS, so manual osteo perforation. So we will discuss both methods and I show you cases afterwards. So I have a lot of materials tonight, so I hope that we have enough time to do that or we will try to go a little faster because I want to have also allow a lot of time for questions and answers at the end. So uh, MOPS, uh, MOPS plus the high frequency vibration technology. So what it does, it, it, it activates the biology to make difficult movements more predictable. So it shortens treatment times and reduce discomfort and reduce the visits. So it's all about movement, more predictable, heart movement, impacted teeth, impacted canine, open spaces, closed spaces, uh, resisting to movement, lingualized, cross bite. Those are the cases that you need MOPs. And sometimes if you want just the treatment to be faster in general, you can use MOPs and be pro as well prophylactically. So you'll see some cases as well later about that. So the practice benefits from this technology is to differentiate from competition and direct to consumer as a high tech office. Also provide clinical confidence to quote a faster treatment time. So you can tell the patient that you know, combined with this technology and can help you speed up the treatment depending on your teeth, how it's gonna move, but it will help. More availability in the schedule to see new patients and see them sooner. So therefore, the accelerated process that happened as a net result. So in this slide, you see the picture of the VPro device. That's a new VPro Plus. It's a, it's a wireless charging. And then on the right side, you see like a handpiece. So that is for the mop. So it's a handpiece that's used for mops. And the mop tip is at the end of the contra angle. And the bottom part is being charged, and the top part is uh, reusable and re-sterilizable. The handpiece is sterilizable, but the tip is disposable. All mop tips are disposable at all times. So one way is to accelerate, as you see in the past, is like low frequency vibration. So the patient required to, to, to do that for 20 minutes a day, minimum. So they said you can repeat two, three times if you want to, but it takes a long time for, for low frequency vibration. So, and they, they recommend that the aligners should be removed during the, the vibration. So you vibrate the teeth, not with the aligners. And it certainly rely on patient compliance. So what Propel offers is they offer high frequency vibration. So you can keep, you have to keep the trays in your mouth. Uh, the patient have to keep the tray in their mouth, so it's rechargeable. This one uh, is wireless. It only needs five minutes a day. So according to the studies, if you do more than five minutes, you don't get more benefits out of it. 
but you can do more. Sometimes I tell the patient to do, okay, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, or any time that you like to do to just to, to help see the tray, to suit your discomfort, or if you feel better. But we recommend that one time per day of five minutes. And the cycle is five minutes and it stops itself. So it's also rely on patient compliance. Like you know, so anything that is removable, we rely on patient compliance. But five minutes, it's really, really easy to do. So you can do during, you know, uh, washing dishes or watch TV or do homework and stuff like that. So they can do that or before bedtime, basically. Okay, so this is the device, so it comes like that. So it's the first and only high frequency device for active treatment and retention that is approved by the FDA and certainly Health Canada. That's how we can use it here in Canada. So the box is like that. So you charge the box and then the, uh, the VPRO device is uh, split in two pieces. So you charge the motor and then the, the mouthpiece is also placed in the box and then you can carry with you if you travel or you just leave the box there and you can use just the mouthpiece itself. So the benefits, the clinically, uh, clinical benefits of the high frequency vibration. So we have biological benefits and we have physical benefits. So what does it mean physical benefits though? Is mechanical aligner seating. So the performance is better than the low frequency vibrations. Uh, we recapture, we can use a recapture a non-compliance um, tray or if the patient forget to wear the trays or they change a the tray um, and uh, they can use that device to help seat the tray, physically seat the tray. And also they can use this device during the retention. So let's say they go to Mexico for two weeks and they forgot their retainers. They come back home and it's like, oh my God, my retainer does not seat well then they can use this vibration to seat the tray. So if one round doesn't work, repeat two, three times, and then it will seat eventually. So you will see a little bit further uh, later, I will show you a case of a retention recapture. And on the other hand, we have the biological benefits. So we have a long list of biological benefits according to the studies. And uh, bone density is increased. Uh, bone, uh, uh, preservations, uh, following extraction, we have here pro uh, prolonged osteoclast activity, the PDL fibro fibroblast proliferation, osteoblast proliferation, aligner accuracy is improved, we reduce the amount of uh, refinement, uh, increase the rate of tooth movement, reduce treatment times, that would be the end result, the net result of the accelerated process. It certainly reduced orthodontic discomfort, so I get that all the time. Uh, improve bone quality and retention, and minimize the root resorption. So those two has to, 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 to be under the, the studies, but uh, a lot of benefits biologically. So this is how it looks. It is a real delivery of a VPRO to an aligner patient. So uh, basically, we have the box ready. We open from the box. You see the box in on the the table there and then they come with a charger with a cable with the device itself and then this is how we hand to the patient and uh, this is exactly where the patient is wearing the uh, V Pro device so in this case the patient had clear aligner uh, clear correct aligners inserted this is her first day of the trays being inserted so two things we know is like the clear line uh, the aligner uh, from clear track is pretty clear it's almost invisible and then the vpro device is there so you can see that the shape fits very well into the majority of the mouth so from my career i have never seen a case where the mouthpiece does not fit in any one so if you have a smaller mouse the mouthpiece will stick out a little bit buckly if you have a bigger arch then the mouthpiece will fit more inside, but it never passed that. So, okay. This is another patient with a VPRO also with clear correct aligners. So you can see the clear correct trays there. And this is his day one of starting. And uh, we insert the uh, uh, VPRO uh, device here. This is another patient at the insert as well. So it just happened to be these three photos are clear correct cases, but it goes along as well with any clear liners and with Invisalign, obviously. So uh, yeah, she puts it in, she tries it. So she's a class two deep bite. So, I mean, uh, when she bites down, she exerts a little force on it. So apparently the teeth and the trays kind of fit well onto the, 
the, the, the surface of the V Pro. So it, it, it feels pretty good, it feels comfortable. So, and they all have good feedback about it. So another modification that I did, this is many years ago. So it's called the uh, Dr. Mar design because I was a consultant for a line uh, a few years ago for the mandibular advancement wing. So you may have seen that. So MA for class two correction in a young growing teens. Uh, you see on the picture um, in the center, you see where the lower clues also adapt the V Pro to fit around the wing. So the goal is we want to have a nice flat surface for the V Pro to lay onto the trays and then also touch the most teeth as possible. So on the left and the right side of the picture, you see that the wings are engaged properly and the, 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 the typodon is seated well. So, and uh, it's the same mouthpiece. I just adapted in the lab myself and it works the same way. And patient feels a lot more comfortable. Otherwise they cannot really use this without having to jackle a little bit the, 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 the size of the V Pro. And this is the V Pro uh, with the Invisalign MA tray. So this is one of my patient here. So, um, I have the VPro with the uh, wings and then, uh, I mean, the Invisalign with the wings and the VPro adapted. So now on the right side of the picture, you see that the wings are engaged. Uh, the red circles show you the wings are engaged and then the VPro device seats very well. So this case is Invisalign MA for a growing teenager. So Another uh, application for the VPro is that you can use to see the tray. So on the left side, the top picture, you see tray number one. This is a clear correct case. A patient would have a lot of crowding on the lower. This is a non-extraction case as well. So tray one, the tray seat very well. Uh, clear correct is that they don't have a lot of attachments and the attachments are quite small whenever we needed to. The uh, tray number 18, when we get to tray 18, we find that the lower tray did not seat as well from the day one that we changed to 18. You can see that the crowding is much improved at 18 trays. And then we ask the patient to uh, run the VPro, uh, go home, do your VPro and run one round and then send me the pictures. So he did the VPro one round and they sent me the pictures. So this is the same tray 18 that is engaged after the VPro. So you know that the right circle, we see that left and right side, the premolars and the canine area, even the lateral, the 30, uh, the 42 did not engage well. So after the VPro, uh, it, it seats pretty well the tray seat completely and then we move on with his re uh, treatment. So the VPro also used for retention. So to recapture uh, the relapse, so saves time, save money, save trip, if the their retainer is still in good shape. So the picture here is like one year uh, post retainer compliance. So the patient certainly did not wear retainer enough so that we have the 31 lingualize or shift and 41 and 32 kind of buccalize a little bit. So uh, we ask that the patient uh, put on her their VPro and try to shake it in. So if you have a Ververa retainer, you cannot see it this way because the relapse has already been too much. So it will be too painful. So we start the, we put the VPro on and we have to go slow. So we have to repeat every day or a couple of times a day or three, four times a day. However, the patient can do it. So in this slide, you see the picture number one, the same patient. So uh, the retainer did not see it. So it, 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 it sits very high in the front, but we see the molars on the left kind of seat okay. And then uh, after the VPro, so same day we put the VPro, it seats better. And then the follow-up four months later, uh, not just the retainer seat better, but also the teeth seem to be also improved in their position. We see the height of the 3141 has already been adjusted or readjusted back. It's almost like a uh, try to recapture that relapse back. So if the patient is good at uh, doing that. 
the uh, retention store is still activating the biology. So what happens, the high frequency vibration, like we said earlier, is like it increased the PDL fibroblast proliferation, uh, increased the osteoblast proliferation. That means there's a remodeling happening around there. It improved the bone quality and the retention. So I always tell the patient to have the repro. That's like keep the repro all the way through your retinal process. Like keep it for life if you can uh, keep it for life. Whenever it's damaged, you just have to get a new one and uh, use it once a night or every few times a week. And if you feel the retainers is tight, then seed it and, and vibrate it in and it should go in before you have to redo the treatment would cost you money and also saves time, right? So the benefits are in retention is certainly the recapture of relapse during retention, like we saw earlier. So uh, research showed that the result demonstrated subjects using high frequency vibration experience a statistically significant net increase in bone density at the completion of orthodontic treatment. So we have the reference on the bottom of the slide here. So uh, the other par part of the uh, accelerating process is the MOPs or called micro osteoperforations. So this is, uh, this is the, the procedure that you have to do in the office. So the repro the patient does uh, at home, the MOP we have to do in the office under sterile condition. So uh, minor osteoperforation, or we always say it's MOP in our office. So what happens if we create or we cause bone injury or we cause a sterile inflammation in the area where we want to move the teeth or the area that we feel, you know what, I want to, 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 to give a little more oomph, a little bit more push in, in terms of movement, in terms of activating the movement. And then the inflammation create a increase in cytokines production, the cytokine uh, have the effect on the rate of bone remodeling. So we know that bone remodeling also uh, change the bone density. So reduce the bone density and the reduced bone density while we do orthodontic treatment with either a liner or, you know, uh, brackets, uh, it will allow us to move a little bit easier, a little bit faster, less uh, discomfort and less side effect as well because there's no chemical in the mop process. So the MOPS clinical benefits is why we have a faster tooth movement, it accelerated bone remodeling, increased cytokines activity. It is very well tolerated by big majority of the patient from all my careers with MOPS. I have only one patient that said like, it's so painful after the numbing, it goes away. So that said, uh, he might have a very low pain tolerance, but the majority, I would say 98, 99% of the patient, they're fine. They don't even have to take any uh, painkiller at all. And that said, it depends how you do it and how you numb the patient. You just have to go easy, go slow, and you know, and, and, and tell them ahead of time what they feel. That's they they tolerate the procedure very well. Uh, it protects the root because we're not aiming for the root. Uh, transient decrease in bone density. Yes, that's what we need to move the teeth because we want the bone to be a little bit uh, easier to travel through. And also it enhances line accuracy because the, the, the tray uh, tend to see better and we have less uh, rescanning to do with MOPS and B-Pro combined. So, so this procedure, like I said earlier, is a doctor control procedure. We call it doctor control accelerated orthodontic. So in this slide, you see the three examples of uh, osteoperforation. So we go from the left called corticotomy. This is the, 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 the most uh, invasive. And we go to the right, which is the mop from Propel, which is the least invasive. So corticotomy, I'm sure some of you have done it, or have seen it or have studied or have read about it. So it's it, it very invasive, it's time intensive, it requires patient recovery time, pain control, high cost, and it requires an extensive training for clinicians. So uh, corticotomy normally is not recommended to be done by orthodontist. Sometimes it's done by dentist who does uh, their own aligner case or braces case, but most of the time it's done by a periodontist or an oral surgeon. 
The next one is piezo surgery. So a little bit less invasive than corticotomy, but still a lot more than MOPS. Uh, still require a flap or a uh, tunnel procedure, require patient recovery time, high cost, and require extensive training as well. And um, talking about risk management, this is something really, really tough to do, right? Really difficult. And with the pandemic happening from last year and this year, uh, this kind of procedure, you have to be super careful. You have to be make sure that you know a uh, patient give consent to do all that and that said even the mops we have a consent so i give a consent to the patient so they sign a consent for the mops as well even though it's very very easy to do so any dental procedure we give a consent to the patient so mops mop is micro invasive so no patient recovery needed basic basically just a couple of hours they will be fine uh, no to low cost to the patient. So most insurance will pay for the MOPS procedure. Uh, I can see that insurance pay anywhere between 50% to 80%. So we have a big variety of patient uh, insurance that cover that. And uh, the training for the clinician is very minimal. So it's simple to do and it doesn't really hurt the patient that much. So the MOPS devices, we have three devices that can be used. So I have all three, I have used all three. So from left to right, we have a single use device. So the depth limiter with LED indicators. So that device is single use. So the tip has the sleeve in the clear plastic. So that sleeve will retract in when you push onto the skin or onto the area where you do your uh, mops. And then the lines, the marking lines will show you the depth of the mop that you perform. So uh, it's a surgical steel uh, tip all the time with the uh, Propel and uh, it's packaged for single use and ergonomic design, enhance the tactile sensation, uh, higher helix thread pitch and soft retractable sleeve to hold the tissue top. So uh, the bottom part, the bigger part is where you put in your palm and then when you turn, like a screwdriver, you turn slowly, slowly with pressure and that part swivel. So that part will turn along with the tip inside. And after you're done, you just take your hands out and then the tip will retract back. Uh, I mean, the tip, the, the sleeve will retract back out and then it's safe and then you discard immediately into the shark container. So the other, uh, the middle one is the reusable handle. So the blue handle is a dark blue handle the light teal blue color to the tip is the one that is disposable. It comes individually packaged and you just click it on, you connect the two. And the process is very similar. I like this one uh, when I need to do just the front teeth or just a few uh, areas, there's a few spot to do because I can feel uh, in my hand and it feels good, that handle feels good. It's a good quality handle. And then you have the tip that retract as well the sleeve retracts, so you see the marking there. And then when you're done, uh, you just have to click uh, on the top of the handle, so basically on the bottom of the picture, uh, where the big head, you just click it and it will release that uh, propel tip into the shark container, and then you sterilize the handle itself. The other one, the other way to do it is a power driver. So power driver is chargeable. So it has the, the control to go forward, to go backward. It has the RPM that you need. Normally the RPM, we want about 45 RPM. So 45 RPM, low RPM. Remember that when you want to do mop, you go slow because you need to enter the bone, to enter the cortical by exerting the pressure and create what we call a micro fracture or multiple micro fractures around the area. So normally the micro fractures happen about six to 10 millimeters around the area that you do the mop. And that's what caused the intentional inflammation that is sterile that will activate the whole chain of bone remodeling. Okay, so this handpiece you charge and then there's a contra angle that is uh, sterilizable and then the, the mop tip is just like a burr. So it comes with a latch type, individually packaged, and then you just click and latch to the handpiece. And once you're done, you click and then you throw it into the shark right away. 
and re-sterilize the, uh, the tip and then you wipe the handle. Normally I put a plastic sleeve on, just like the, uh, the, the, the light for the composite, you know, like the, the, the curing light, so it's easy. And when I do with the hand people, how, uh, when I do I use this, I use this when I do more posterior teeth, like the five, six, and seven and stuff like that. If I have a lot of spots to do, if I do a full mouth or I do a full art, so I don't want to turn my hand all the time. So the hand piece kind of give you that help so that you get, you don't get tired with your hand turning and twisting. So uh, a staff member could help you while you hold the hand piece down and you kind of have your thumb on the, the head of the contra angle, exert a, a pressure onto between the teeth. So the staff can push the start and stop button for you and reverse button as well. So the benefits of MOPS really for patients. So it's minimally invasive. The technique performs chair side in minutes by treating clinicians. So we'll show you how we do that. No patient recovery time needed. So basically just a painkiller if they need to, otherwise there's nothing to do. Uh, doctor control, not rely on patient compliance, save time, less office visit mean less time of work or school. So a lot of my patients at one, um, that one, the accelerated treatment, they go with the mop. But also we have a big portion of the patient also they want the repro because they want to be having it themselves to use at home. And an, uh, another part of the patient pool, they want both. So they want the repro for the trays and for the comfort and they want mop added on uh, to accelerate the process. So we have both combinations. So the practice benefit for MOP is that provide cutting edge technology. So increased treatment acceptance, patient are more likely to accept a faster treatment time. You know, like everyone that come in, they always want faster. Attract new patients. So they know that you do uh, accelerate treatment in your office, you offer along with your clear trade your, or your braces. Um, they're looking for a faster treatment time because, uh, and they like the new technology. They understand technology. And also the MOPS is also uh, paid partially by insurance as well. You can incorporate a small premium for your treatment fee. If not, you can charge the MOPS separately as well. And also it reduces the patient burnout. You have a difficult case that take two or three or even three and a half years. So you can propose MOPS and VPRO, so uh, helping them to go a little faster and also give them a little bit more motivation to, to, to help you uh, along with the treatment. Okay, so the steps, so we have three steps, so three easy steps. So step number one is really evaluate the treatment area. So which area you want to mop, or so you want to do the, uh, the, the, the osteoperation. So you check the tissue and then you always have to have a Panorex or a PA or whichever you have. Normally a Panorex gives you a good idea of where you want to mop and what space you have. Next, you ask the patient to rinse with Colexidine. So Normally, I ask them to rinse once uh, before the procedure and once after the procedure and for one minute. And then after that, we have to anesthetize the patient or the area. So normally, it's just the area that needs to be anesthetized. It's very simple, very easy. Um, you can use a, a topical. I use a 20% a lidocaine, 20% plus a little bit of intratration just to make sure that they're comfortable. They don't feel anything. It's always better. And uh, the, the, the depth for the mops is really depend on the area. So I will show in the next slide what, is, what are the depths recommended. So um, why not a burr? So this would be a question that I, I, this is a question that I saw all the time. Why not a burr? Because the burr is too fast, first of all. It's not meant for micro perforation. It's meant to dig and cut out. So we don't, when we do mop, we don't cut any bone out. So this is a concept that I'm sure you understand, but this is, again, you need to realize that mop is to create pressure. We don't take any bone out. We create pressure, we create micro fractures to just initiate the process in the bone, but we don't take any structure out. Uh, when we use a burr, we certainly use, uh, take off the bone, we take off some other stuff and uh, we have a danger to the root anatomy because it goes so fast and so hot. Uh, with the heat, we can cause also the necrosis of the tissue, which is the contraindication to what we want. Um, 
we need a surgical irrigation if we do a burr, a soft tissue trauma, and also the tissue punch, because when you use a burr, the tissue will get tangled. Otherwise, you have to do a pilot hole and all that kind of stuff. So it's very, it's not meant for marks for osteoporturation or for accelerated treatment. Okay, so uh, MOX is the first device that cleared by the FDA for use in accelerated treatment. So on the right picture, you see the action of a bird, which is not good. This is a, would be a, a contraindication to use for accelerated treatment. So on the bottom right picture, this is the MOX. So this is after the treatment. So this is after a few minutes of treatment, you basically see some red dots and represent the area that you did the MOX. So, and then uh, one may ask, so can I use a TAD? So that's a good question too. So why not a TAD? So a TAD, TAD is meant to, 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 to stay. Uh, the metal is not the same, it's softer. So you see there's some uh, studies there or some uh, report there, microimplant fracture uh, prevention is better than the cure. So you see on that picture, we see that the TAD is broken. Uh, the TAD is indicate for one insertion. This is something you have to remember. TAD is meant for one insertion. So once the TAD is used, when you take it out, it needs to be thrown away because it's not strong enough to re-engage the bone. And we will see also that the TAD's anatomy, the tip of the TAD is not meant for mop. Okay. So here we go, the design matters. So why it matters? Let's look at the TAT first. The TAT is dull and fatigue. So it, 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 it's dull and it, it has fatigue faster. So it, it has more chance of fracture when you do the, if you use a TAT for mops. Uh, and it's not, it doesn't have a hand piece that can really hold tight to the, the to the tap, so there's a chance that we lose control, and then you know the, the the tap might fly out or fly into the patient's throat or something like that. So it's not recommended. It's meant for a single use to hold some other things. So it's uh, the, the the metal and the thread is different. So propel tip. So propel tip is surgical steel. So you see that the tip is. Let me see here. So the tip is the uh, very short. The tip is very short. The moment you pass one thread or one thread and a half, it goes to the full size. So it's like cylindrical all the way through. So you get one millimeter of, uh, per rotation. So you have to engage. So the, the, the width of the mop is 1.6 millimeters and the length of the mop tip is seven millimeters and it has seven threads. So basically one thread per millimeter. And it has the, the gauge on the outside that you can see when you do the work, okay? You see the tip for the tab is tapered. So you never cause that kind of a, a stress to the bone because it's meant to go in to be partially integrated to the bone and to hold there for a few weeks to a few months or even some people have tabs for years. So and that's okay because it, it can integrate a little bit as well. So MOPS, we don't intend to integrate anything. We intend to create microfracture and take it out and repeat. So mop tip can be repeated several times. So normally when you do one mouth of mop, you can use one same tip, it's not a problem. So again, in my experience, I find that uh, most patients requires one to two treatments. Complex cases may require three sessions of mops. And uh, one to two uh, mops are recommended mesial and distal. So normally I do two and two. The osteoclastic response is about six to 10 millimeter around the treatment site, like the, the radiation of the microfractures. So for acceleration, we perforate around the rate limiting movement. What it means is like we, we, uh, we mop around tough teeth or tooth that are difficult to move possible ankylosis or partial ankylosis, uh, impacted teeth or closing, rotation, and stuff like that. If the teeth are really ankylosed, then we have no choice, but we can send to the surgeon to do a luxation. And then after that, you can use MOP in the future visit as well. So you can combine with that as well. So the depth selected, so uh, typically for the anterior teeth is three millimeter deep, posterior teeth is somewhere 
between five to seven millimeters and on the palate is seven millimeter deep because the tissue is very thick and especially at the angle of the mouth there. So it's very deep. The osteoclastic effect is peaked within 24 hours and it will remain like that about 10 to 12 weeks. So therefore, when we do MOP, I always tell the patient that we need to repeat within two to three months. Otherwise, the effect is not additive. So then we have to repeat again. So we need to, to keep the dosage going. I told them just like vaccination. So we have to repeat the dose at a certain uh, interval of time to maximize the benefits of the uh, procedure. So then the treatment can be repeat every 10 to 12 weeks or whenever the patient wants. Some patient is that they want to repeat again in a month. That's okay too. Yeah. Or six months later, that's fine too. So where do I perforate? So manual auto perforation can be performed either buccally or lingually, but most of the time for ease of access and also for patient comfort, I almost do 80 or 90% of the cases are from the buccal uh, because it's the simplest approach. And you see on the, the picture here, you see the yellow dot. So if you have more space between the teeth or more root divergence, you can do more holes or more perforations in, in uh, like a triangle shape. If not, you can do just a vertical or linear line. So the depth, so you see here on the diagram of the teeth, so three for all interior teeth and five to seven for posterior teeth and certainly a seven uh, for palatal. If you do palatal of the five or the six, it is seven you go all the way to the end of the tip of the sleeve. The sleeve go between three, five, seven. So if you see that the sleeve disappear completely, that means you are at seven millimeters. Okay, so the perforation pattern. So perforation patterns, we have it here. So uh, you see on the left picture here uh, between the central. So we put three points. Most of the time I put two. Sometimes we don't have the, the vestibules are deep enough to do three. Uh, so I do two, minimum two. And uh, most of the time, like I said, two and two, two and two and two. So if you want to rotate one, two, we have to do mesial and distal, always mesial and distal of the two. So you have to cover left and right. On the lower arch is the same concept. So if you have room, you can do three in the triangle shape. If not, you do vertical shape or linear pattern. So here, post-mop uh, clinical pictures. So post-mop, you see that uh, the dots are there and you barely can see it and it doesn't bleed at all. So most of the time, it's barely any perceptible bleeding. So this is also the same patient post-mop. You see the top is uh, completed, the bottom is being done and he has the Invisalign trays. So the trays can be worn at the same time if the patient wish, and, but most patients wish that they take the trays out. So that's okay too. So we try on the trays on the top and then we do the bottom at the same time as the trays are in there. So post-treatment, so post-treatment, so patient experienced some tenderness around the treatment site for about a day or two. Most people will say, you know what, by the next morning, I'm fine. Uh, some of them, they say, you know what, I don't feel anything. That's fine. Nothing at all. I don't have to take anything else. So after the treatment, we recommend only to use Tylenol or the equivalent uh, product that is not NSAID, that's not uh, anti-inflammatory because we don't want to cure the inflammation because the inflammation is being created by us intentionally to cause this uh, remodeling of the bone in the area so we can move the teeth a little easier. So no Advil or ibuprofen, uh, yeah, Advil or ibuprofen, but only Tylenol, okay? And they can repeat as needed. Most people, they just don't need it. They need probably one pill and then the next day another pill and that's it. So after a day, after between 24 hours to 48 hours, the red dot on the gum disappeared. So it's sealed already and then the inside still active for about three months. So um, yeah, like we said, we have a lot of material to cover. So we have, uh, we're gonna show the clinical cases. So using the mops and then after that, I, I'm uh, happy to take questions. So it is, uh, so aligner cases. So this is about aligner efficiency. So case number one, so you'll see, so we have a severe crowding case, ectopic tooth two, four. We have crossbite constricted maxilla, we have bone loss, and we have recession. So 
This is the case. So you see that the 2-4 is buckly position and it's always been like that and uh, a bad perio condition. So in this case, the patient decided to uh, have it removed. So we will be removing this tooth, but then I proposed the mops to help her with the treatment to go faster because she has uh, two cross bites on one on each side and the crowding is quite severe. And this is an Invisalign case. So this is the day one initial tray insert. So the picture on the top, we see that the insert of the tray happens on the bottom with the attachment placed. And on top, we place the attachments, but we cannot insert the trays because we have to have the 224 removed. So now the question is, so why don't you remove before? I don't remove teeth before I start the treatment, especially with clear liners and nor with braces when I did braces in the past. Because why? Because we want that effect of the extraction for two reasons. One reason is the mop reasons, like a, a, the fresh extracted area is good for us to move teeth. The second reason, if you don't want any change prior to inserting the trays. So uh, that's why, because they want to tray accuracy so your tray fit all the time. So the patient go home with the tray and then they get the tooth removed and then they insert the trays immediately and start the treatment that way. Okay, so um, this is a uh, progress one. So the tooth two four have been removed in this picture. So there's some movement already happening on the lower because the top, uh, we don't have much movement and then she's ready for mop treatment. So progress number two, this is three months, so we don't have mops yet. We just want to double check to make sure that she's doing okay, that the trays are fitting well. You see there's major rotations of the one, three, the two, 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 three, two, four, and uh, constricted arches, lots of dark triangles, and there's some crowding on the bottom. So this is uh, month number five. So we do first sets of mops, so uh, quad one and two. So I only propose the mop on the top in this case at the time. It's been a long time now, this case. Um, you see immediately after mop, that's what you see. Uh, red dot bleeds a little bit. Uh, and if you wipe it off after a few minutes later, you don't have anything. So I just tell my staff to take a picture right away. So that's the mops, first round of mops. She has two rounds of mops for this patient. So this is 10 months, uh, second mop. So we repeat the same area for the second time. And you can see that there's a lot of uh, uh, improvement happening. So certainly the trays also, you have to program your tray and do your prescription properly as well in order to make the treatment move fast. But the mops help uh, tremendously in terms of uh, bone remodeling and in moving teeth. So we see on the low, we have some spacing because I just did some uh, IPR uh, that day. And also I did some IPR between the 1121 the same time. So we do MOP, we do IPR, and so the trays continue. So this is her progress, uh, 14 months. So this is finishing. Um, so we still have some rotations, but the, the crossbite looked really good already. And the smile, we have her teeth smiling up there. So it looks pretty good. So at uh, a year and a half, uh, we finished the treatment and uh, we complete the treatment. We reduce the dark triangle for her. We cannot take it all. And uh, we have retention. So my retention is also clear trays. And if somebody has a V Pro, I don't think she has a V Pro in this one. So if you have the V Pro, then you would recommend the V Pro to be used also along with the retainers all as long as they can keep the V-Pro in good shape. So this is her uh, from uh, start to finish. So you see on the upper left corner, she started treatment, uh, the smile, and then the, we see the, uh, the pictures as we progress downward. And then we go on to the right side. So uh, all the way to the finish. So we see the, the right side, the third occlusal shot that is her finishing trace and then the final picture on the bottom. So this is her again, just to compare the before and after picture. So uh, Invisalign case, so about 18 months of treatment. And um, we have a big, big change that happened. So you see that you, we can know the uh, 
I didn't put the, uh, the buckle shot. So you can see that the gum, the perio looks way nicer after the treatment because it's easier for her to take care of and um, less perio uh, issues as well. So all her sevens are rotated and everything is lined up. So case number two, constricted arches, midline deviation, you'll see anterior cross bite, class three, anterior open bite and high angle grower. So he's a vertical grower. So this patient came to me, that's why I don't have the initial picture because he came to me as a third opinion from uh, different offices because he was proposed to do jaw surgery and then the, to correct the case and then put braces on. So he did not want jaw surgery nor braces. So he somehow found us online or heard about somebody. So he came to us. This is what I have a picture of the front here. And then you can see the staff here. He's a hyperdivergent case and he has certainly a cross bite and midline deviation and open bite tendency as well. So this is our record. So we took this, the photo when he started already the treatment. So this is the day that we uh, placed the attachment. So this is an Invisalign case treatment. So attachment placed and we start the process. So here the trays are on. So you note know that this is an open bike case. So when you see the patient before you put the trays on or before you put the braces on, you might not notice the, the open bite uh, issues that he has. So therefore it's so important to diagnose the case ahead of time, because when you put the trays on, I know that the thickness of the tray that opened up the bite, but at the same time, it shows us that the open bite is there. So if you have a class one uh, or a class, uh, class two deep bite, when you put the trays on, you, it won't look like that, okay? So arch is constrict a constriction, crowding and anterior open bite and then midline deviation. So in this patient, so I just recommend one mop treatment. So one session of mop to the upper and lower anterior teeth between three to three, not past the three, just two to two basically. So I do mesial distal, mesial distal. On the top, I did not do the midline because the central seemed to be fine. And it's just between the laterals, uh, around the laterals and these are the canines. And then on the low, the same, just to try to close the open bite. And this is him three months post mop. So we see that the bite start to close. And then also the arch have been, uh, you know, unravel a little bit more. The lower arch look really nice at three months already. The upper arch still have some work to go. The one, two, uh, still have some rotation to deal with. And then also we need to seat the front and then the left canine also improve the midline. So this is only three months post mops. So here we are five months progress. So this case was so fast. It was faster than I thought. I think I told him probably a year and a half or so, but we finished half the time. So uh, this is the tray at progress uh, five months. So we see that the, the bite is still open a little bit. We still need some symmetry correction and improvement of the canine and the laterals. So here he is at seven months, we are at finishing stage already. So we can see that the class three is become class one or super class one because we cannot treat uh, the bone uh, or the jaw, but we can see that once a cross bite is corrected, the, the midline seem to be uh, corrected by itself just about, but we, with the mop, it helps. The one, two already been derotated completely and now it's just about to settling the bite. So this is him at nine months of treatment. So it's like half the time that I had promised him, it's like, you know what, your surgical case, I have to have you sign a memo saying that, you know, I'm not guarantee anything, you know, but I try to go fast, like, do the best you can, Dr. Mar. So we went with a mop, so. And uh, this is him uh, at the end of treatment at nine months. And please note that the midline is centered. Uh, we might have done some small IPR just for Bolton uh, issues, but not uh, much more than that. And you see the two, three and the one, three seat properly and it's balanced. So is it perfect? Probably not. But I mean, from a uh, perspective from the beginning to now, I mean, it's a surgical case that he'd been proposed for all this time. So I think uh, he is, he was very happy with the result. 
So this is him. This is a journey from the left side before treatment to the right side after treatment. You see the arch form changed tremendously. Uh, the lower, the upper, and then the, the, the aesthetic, the midline, even the canting. If you look at the initial picture, we have canting as well. So after the treatment, is, it looks pretty uh, level. So again, to, 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 to prove the point, to show the point, it's like initial step from a different office. Uh, we, we see that the, the, the interior open bite is there, the procline incisors are, is there, and the end uh, treatment set look different. We see it's more relaxed lip, the incisor, uh, interior incisor angulation is different, and they have overjet and overbite. So here it is, so the front uh, shot, so the overjet overbite is improved, the midline's improved, and the general aesthetic is improved. So case number three, so um, asymmetrical maxilla, uh, class three again, anterior cross bite, crowding, and retrocline lower incisor. So this is another case that they hear through the grapevine that we can do something with clear liner and also can be done without jaw surgery. Again, uh, she's a class three on the right side, class one-ish on the left side because she have a very retrocline lower incisor. So uh, when you, you, you upright those T's, you decompensate those T's, it will be in class three for sure. Should be a negative overjet. So th this is a clear, correct case. So um, this is clear, correct uh, treatment. The tray look like that, less attachments. And I have a few attachments on the central and the art uh, on the right side and some on the lower. So we have a rotation and stuff like that. So initial tray, so this is mops at six weeks, one session only. So I did only mops on the, yeah, I did the front. So um, between the, the two to two on the lower and the, for the central top. One session of mop and then we finishing. Um, and then at this stage of the finishing, we see the midline still off a little bit. So, we still need to upright the molar, the 46, and then also derotate the 35. But the general picture is looking pretty good. Also, we also level the incisal edges of 1121. So here she is at final refinement is 10 months. So this case is just being, it's going to be done in the next uh, couple of months. So I just have the final refinement here. She is at 10 months right now. So this 10 month change. So you see the arch looking good, the alignment is good, the crowding is all gone, uh, the midline is fairly good already, and she was a class three before, and now she's class one both sides. So this is her journey from the cross bite, uh, lower midline to the left, and her chin divot to the left because of the cross bite as well. And the initial tray insertions, picture number two. Uh, picture number three on the left is the mops, and then the Picture number four uh, is the finishing tray and the refinement on the bottom there. So with that cross by for some reason, her smile always uh, crooked. So this patient has this uh, asymmetrical smile. I think her soft tissue is uh, uh, always doing that. So even though the, the, the teeth are straight. So I try to check several times, but it, that's how she, she smiles. So. And they are very happy with the result, especially when their friend referred. So yeah, this is her, uh, her journey again. So before the, the treatment, and this is the 10 months of refinement, final refinement treatment. So we don't have a lot to do. So just improve the midline even to get more perfect if we want to, and then the close some spaces and that's what that. Okay, so a few more cases. So I mean, the time is uh, getting fast. So uh, more example of accelerate aligner cases. I got some cases from my colleagues. So this one is from, uh, Dr. Nicosizis, he's a big Invisalign guy. So uh, this is a treatment that he did a seven months uh, of treatment using three mop sessions. Seven months, three mop session, and it's non-extraction. The uh, This other one is from uh, Dr. Shipley. So it's a class two div two case. So he did aligners and mops as well. And then it's six months of treatment for the mild crowding. Well, mild to moderate crowding. So six months with one mop, top and bottom. And then again, uh, another case here is uh, class three, uh, open bite. Uh, we have a Bolton issue, uh, diastema, so aligners and um, uh, mops, and then five months using two, uh, two mop applications. So we 
see that the space is closed and uh, the midline is centered and the, the arch is developed. Uh, both arches have been developed. So prophylactically, like I said, so in some cases we don't do for accelerating treatment, but just to, to ease the treatment, to make the treatment go easy. So we call proactive MOPs, so aligner plus a MOPs, 10 months of treatment, three MOP sessions, so before and after. And then the, this one is also proactive or prophylactic, so uh, to close the diastema and kind of improve the aesthetic there. And uh, two months of treatment with one MOP of uh, one session a month, so between the uh, one, two to two, two. And that's the uh, result at the end, so after the healing and uh, finish of closing the, the gaps. So again, proactive case, so we have uh, another case here, aligners plus MOPs, so six months and one application. So MOPs really works, it really works, especially you do it right, it really works. It helped the treatment go a lot faster, a lot more smoother. Okay, so and uh, that's it. So thank you so much for the opportunity for me to present uh, the science behind MOP and VPRO and also the cases. And uh, this is uh, my office and this is my email. If you have any questions, you can always send me emails and uh, I'm ready to take questions. So thank you. So I see there's a few questions, a few comments here. So uh, so what do you charge? So uh, one of the questions say, what do you charge for VPRO? How do you find patient acceptance? So the VPRO, uh, the VPRO, it depends on your uh, level of um, uh, the, the the level of uh, I mean the clients that you if you use a lot you get the discount like that but I know that they for the DBN they have an extra 10% discount from the lowest cost so we charge flat $500 fee for the VPRO and some cases if they have a second child or a second family member or third family member we would throw the VPRO at no charge for them but we always keep the treatment fee separate from what we do as uh, VPRO or accelerated, so to not, you know, confuse the treatment fees and all that kind of stuff. So uh, $500 for the VPRO, and if they do MOP, then we, we, we send a pre-off for the MOPs. Good question. Uh, do you change your aligner schedule when you use VPRO, i.e. from 10 or 7 days to 5? Yes, we do. So after the MOPs, uh, normally, if the treatment, if the case is difficult, after the MOP, I ask the patient to keep the same schedule for another round of treatment, like uh, six weeks or something to the same speed, or either 10 days or seven days. And after that, we can go shorter. And most, but most cases, after the first MOP, we change and we shorten the rotation of the trace for sure. Yes, absolutely. So uh, another question is, uh, you spoke about insurance for MOP. Can you elaborate on that for GP? So insurance for MOP. So yes, insurance for MOP, you use the code. I can't remember the code by, by, by heart, so I can ask my staff uh, what code we use. It's, it's a period code. So um, we charge $250 per sextant, and then most insurance pay, I don't know, $200 or $180 or uh, or 50% or 80% or sometimes they don't pay at all. So we always send a pre-off ahead of time and then we always get patient consent. And again, talking about MOPs, you have to have patient consent because uh, yeah, we have to have that. The, um, the other question we have, uh, um, how many visits do you save per case when using VPRO? So how many is it per case we save? So uh, we might not save, it's hard to find out how many visits you save, but you can stand out the visits. So that means you don't have to see them as often. So if you need to do a one year treatment or year and a half treatment, instead of seeing them every six to eight weeks, you can see them 10, 12 weeks because they trade fit well and uh, you can uh, yeah, span that way, but still the treatment time is shorter. The uh, 
other question. Um, Oh, another comment. It's like, thank you, Dr. Ma. I wish my case is finished as fast as yours. It's like, well, certainly, you know what? You have to select your case and you have to have experience as well doing these kind of cases. And also not just the case and not just the mob, but you have to, 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 to adjust your prescription with your aligner cases as well too. Uh, some cases we change every four days. So a short, short change that I have is three days. So certainly Dr. Lagarrere works with me. He's my associate there. He sees everything there. So him and I, we, yeah, we do this all the time. And then uh, the shortest tray rotation is three days with MOPS and V Pro, obviously. So let's see uh, what other. So uh, I think uh, DBN, uh, DBN, sorry, Propel will reach out to all of the attendees about the, the, the program for the MOP or the cost for the MOPS. And uh, yeah, you get an email from Jonathan about that. So another question, are you suggesting myofunctional therapy for any of your patients? Okay, uh, myofunctional, I don't do myofunctional, so I do the, the, the MA for Invisalign. And uh, if it's a clear correct, I use a class two elastic. So I don't use my functional appliances. I use them before when I, I was doing braces. It's just a personal preference. And it's just for easy, uh, uh, just an inventory, and that's much easier that way for me. So this is just a personal preference. So, yeah. and uh, I think I think that's it so far with the questions. So if you have any questions or comments, I'm glad to answer them. So thank you so much. And uh, again, so if you have questions, you can always email me or reach out to uh, the Propel rep and uh, I'll, I'll do the best I can. And uh, yeah, I would certainly help you out. Thank you so much. Have a good evening.